So today I'm going to show you how to add text to a SketchUp model. This is the design we're going to make. I teach at George School. It was founded in 1891, so I'm going to show you how to, to make this. Of course, you can make any text that you'd like. It's going to be on a little slab. And notice I've got the dimensions listed here. 3 millimeters tall, 25 millimeters wide, 75 millimeters long. The font also has dimensions. The, the first font here, the George Cole font, is 7 millimeters tall from here to here. It's 2 millimeters um, tall this way. You know, the, the extruded height is 2 millimeters, and it's Times New Roman. And then this down here, I used Arial, 4 millimeter height and 1 millimeter extruded height, half the, half the height of the, the George School text. So I'm going to keep this up so we can we can refer to it. But I've got another one, another window here that I'm going to I'm going to use. And before we get started, just make sure that you've got the the toolbars, the right toolbar, the large tool set is all you need for this. And the buttons we're going to be using, of course, the rectangle to draw the slab. We're going to use the move tool quite a bit, the push-pull tool to make the slab. We're going to then use the dimension tool and the text tool and the 3D text tool as well. All right, so let's get started. First thing you want to do is just, is just make a square. Now the square could be any size. Down here you can see it's quite large. Um, that's that's um, 700 millimeters, <clears throat> 75 centimeters, almost a meter. So this is much bigger than we need for our 3D print. So I'm going to click, simply click in here. And if you remember the dimensions, they were 75 millimeters by 25 millimeters. <clears throat> Excuse me. So those are my dimensions. As soon as I hit enter, the box becomes rather small. So one thing to do is to zoom in on it. Oops, wrong way. I'm so used to the to the mouse. I mean to, to the shortcut keys. So much easier than, than using the, the mouse to do things. So <clears throat> but it's easier to see here. So I want to take that slab. You don't have to, but I'd like to take it and move it to the origin just to show you how that's done. So you can grab the move tool click on it and then just drag it over there but remember you're playing in three dimensions with the move tool so it's it's always 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 better to move it one uh, axis at a time right now the the piece is on the uh, XY plane this red and green axis plane and uh, we can we can restrict the movement with the move tool to um, to, to those two axes one at a time. <clears throat> so I'm going to click, first thing I do is, is click on the move tool, click on the face of the object I want to move. So I clicked one time. Now I'm going to press once on the right arrow and you'll see a little squiggly icon appear next to my move tool. Now I'm confined, no matter how I move my, my cursor or my mouse, the, the object that I click on is confined to the red axis. So I place it where I want it and let it go. I do the same thing again. I click on the face. Now I'm going to press the left key, the left arrow rather, the left arrow. And now I'm constrained, no matter how I move my mouse, I'm constrained to move on the green axis. Place it in the center, and there we go. Now I can zoom extends it, and we can get a, get a good view there of it. Okay. I'm going to use the push-pull tool to lift it up. Again, it was three millimeters. If you remember from the from the picture, I lifted it up some uh, arbitrary height and then come in here and just type 3, hit enter, and now my slab is 25 by 75 by 3. Um, all millimeters, of course. So it's time to add time to add text um, to our slab. And I'm gonna rotate it around so I can see it better. I'm going to choose the 3D text tool and type the text I'd like to place in. And I know because of trial and error 
before I started the tutorial that I'd like Times New Roman. I'd like it to be bold. If you do 3D printing, making uh, the text bold gives it a little bit more body and a little bit more plastic uh, to print. Um, I'm going to have it filled and extruded. The height is going to be 7 millimeters and the extruded height is 2 millimeters. So now I simply press the place button and I'm going to place it on the, the face of my slab. Now this is important. I, be really careful that the cursor says on face. If you do that then you're guaranteed that the words George School will appear on the face of the of the slab. So and try to get it to fit right where you want it. You can move it but it's a little tricky to do that. So move it right exactly where you want it and then click. Now that should appear on the face. If you would like to move it around you can. You can still do so with the move tool. But make sure that you click on the face of the text. If you click here on the end point or on the edge, weird things can happen. So if you click on the face, and let's say I wanted to shift it to the right a little bit, I can then again hit the right arrow on my keyboard, move it to the right. I'm What I'm doing is I'm uh, making sure that it stays on the face. If I just moved it, chances are I would be lifting it off of the slab, which is something I do not want. Okay. So that leaves George School, like we had it here. But then I would also like Founded in 1891 to appear in a, in a bit different font. So that's just the 3D text tool again. 1891. And for this, I want a different font, just to make it look, look different. I want it to be Arial, again bold. But this time I want the height to be four millimeters and the extruded height to be one millimeter. Place it right where you want it on the face. Make sure it says on the face and now it's on the face. Okay, so that's probably all you'll need for the tutorial but I wanted to show you another thing or two uh, and that's uh, adding the, the text the, the labels. You can see my text labels um, here and here and here on the on the one I've already made. This is this just gives the the user um, some notes to, to go by. It doesn't print if you print it on the 3D printer. It's just there for the for the user. So it's simple. You just click this, click on the face, and the default is the uh, the volume of the slab or the volume of the thing that you're you're playing with, but I can say something like 75 millimeters by 25 millimeters by three millimeters. Click off, and there it, there it is. And see, it, it's it's just it floats, just as a floater. All right. The other thing that's quite useful um, for programmers is the dimension tool and that's, that's this little guy here the dimension tool so um, especially if you're drafting or if you're an engineer to put these dimensions actually on the uh, on the model itself is is quite quite valuable so click the tool and then uh, the easiest way to use the tool for example if you wanted to to, to include what the dimension of that long line is here, this this bottom side, just hover over the line, it turns blue, click it, and then drag your mouse down a little bit and you can see that it tells you what the dimensions are. Okay. You could do the same to this side. Like that. Drag down. So to show you how to get the, um, the the depth dimension, you can click on the end point. I mean, you could just click, um, you know, click on the line, and that would give it to you like so. But you you don't have to. You could click on the end point. You could click on the other end point, and then drag it horizontally away, and that gives you those dimensions there. All right. Well, 3D text regular 2D text, and dimension text.